Oh. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my channel. This is D Mike Fishing. Today, I'm gonna show you guys uh, how do I take care of my kayak after fishing in the ocean. So it's really important to, to always uh, make sure to wash your kayak after using, especially in the ocean, uh, if you want your kayak or any equipment that you use for fishing to last longer, all right? So for my stand, I'm gonna use this one that I purchased at uh, Home Depot. I bought it for 21 bucks and this is a called construction saw horse. I use this for the stand and uh, I'm putting this one on. You're probably gonna need a help. Otherwise, um, since I'm so used to using it already, I'm able to manage to do it myself. I have to do is like tilt it a little bit. So that one is uh, uh, horizontally. So this one's a little bit vertical. So if you guys see it, I'll show you. It's just like that. And we can always fix it later. So just like that. Now I'm ready to wash it. So I'm gonna use uh, a regular soap for cars. Uh, please uh, leave a comment down below if uh, you think this is not right. Using a car soap to wash my kayak. Um, and normally I use this for the car but uh, this is the one I only have right now so I'm gonna use it for my kayak. And after that, after washing it, soaping the kayak, I'm gonna use this one. Um, it's ultimately, uh, it's a UV protection. This is to protect your kayak. It's uh, preventing from fading and cracking of the plastic. This is the protection. I'm gonna fill up the water and uh, I use this brush. Yeah, so um, just to prevent from bending too much. Uh, keep, if you bend, keep bending, it could hurt your back. Try to minimize too much bending when you're doing some stuff like this or anything you do in your life. Prevent bending too much. So I fill up this with the bucket with the water. Just like so. And then uh, I'm gonna put some soap. Like I said, please comment down below if I'm using it in the wrong way. Uh, this is the only soap I have. I'm gonna go run to uh, Bass Pro later on, probably buy me some uh, soap for boat. So I'm gonna put some just like that. And before I start, I like to rinse the kayak first to take the, uh, the salt out in the kayak because it's dried up already from uh, traveling. Extended brush, just brush it on top like this, just like that. Take that salt, a dried salt from the ocean, prevent from corrosion. Make your kayak last longer. You gotta take care of your, your hobby, your gadgets. If you want them to last longer, because uh, if you don't clean your kayak, for anything that uh, comes from the ocean, if you use it in the ocean, it will rust it. It will eat anything, you know. So you gotta take care of your thing, you know. And after I wash this one like this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably, I'm gonna tilt it over. There you go. Of course you gotta get you get the side. There you go. And of course I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and I'm gonna rinse that out again. All right. 
after I rinsed it up, I'm gonna flip the cock over. All right, so how I do that, first I slide it. If you're by yourself, but if you, if you can get some help, always ask for help. This thing is heavy. So um, expect to get wet in this kind of situation because there's some water on top too as well. I mean, especially for my situation, my kayak is a little tilt down because uh, of my driveway. But otherwise, if you're in a flat, in the holes of these uh, scupper plugs, the water should drain out. But as you can see, this all flooded over here, back here. Uh, yeah, so expect to, to get wet. I'm gonna slide it over towards the edge of the other side, tilt it over. As you tilt it over, just push it like a little nudge with your uh, with your hips, and then just like that. Okay. So, and then I'm gonna scoot this one a little bit more to make it nice and flat. There we go. The same thing. I'm gonna rinse this off first. Take out the salt, the dried salt from the ocean. At this point, I like to use towel. Maybe you're guys wondering why I'm using the towel. Uh, with the towel, as you wipe it off with a soap, you can double check the bottom of your kayak if there's any crackings, is a, you know some uh, some scratches that really deep, and I'll uh, make sure that check on that one you can thoroughly check your kayak in the bottom especially because uh, you never know what's gonna happen in the middle of the ocean if you don't check that one very often so, just like that and uh, by the way I would like to thank thank you to everyone who subscribed and uh, liking my my content and my videos if you have any suggestion that you guys want to watch please let me know uh, just comment down below and uh, I'm pretty good on uh, replying to every message that you guys send me and I totally appreciate everything your support and the love that you gave for me please uh, always do support me and uh, you guys know the algorithm of the YouTube um, the YouTube would want you to watch every content that uh, post on their channel so please uh, give a love and support continue hopefully you guys don't get tired on what I do and uh, just let me know if you guys want to watch anything so just like this uh, most of the time this is the very part that it warns out on you so my plan of this one so you guys can see that one it's almost flat already so um any suggestion you guys you know, any kayakers out there that you have a suggestion on how to uh, minimize the scratch over here please let me know um i bought some uh Galera tape that i'm thinking about putting it here uh my brother andrew my fellow kayaker he suggested for me to do that so but if you guys have any other idea let me know so far uh, i don't see any bad scratches that it could uh, damage my kayak in the future otherwise i'm gonna keep doing Doing the same thing when I uh, clean this kayak. There you go. Yeah, I trip your treat your your kayak like your own your own wife. <laughs> I hope my wife doesn't watch this. But then uh hey, you know what? Uh, you don't take care of this one. You're in the ocean, you're by yourself most of the time there on this kayak. And if you don't take care of it, don't check it then things go, could go wrong take care of it. always check it always think for safety first all right and then um especially when you go out there in the ocean make sure you have buddy with you all the time you have some friends just two of you is fine but don't go by yourself it's uh things could go wrong and nobody's out there to help you out you don't want to go into that situation all right this is good now i'm gonna rinse it up No deep scratch, no crack, nothing. So, and you want to keep it that way. You know, while you're down here, while your kayak is uh, upside down, I like to go under. I like to go under and spray it down. There's, there's more dirt that you didn't able to stick them out while spraying on top. So I like to spray it down like that. Make sure you take all everything out there. There you go. As far as I know, we're not in drought anymore. I mean, it's been raining. I don't think um, I could get in trouble by using too much water. You know, so um, there we go. I'm gonna flip it over again. Now, you know what? I'm gonna start drying this up so I don't have to keep flipping. I'm gonna start drying this up.
I will, I will probably go back again and dry them one more time so that we can put the, the UV protector that I showed you earlier. All right, we're gonna flip this one again. While this on the sideways, I'm gonna hold on to this. I'm gonna spray it down. Take this. There we go. And this time, earlier we slid it that way. Now this time I'm gonna slide it towards me as we tilt it top. There we go. That's it. Now we're gonna dry this part up with the same towel I used earlier. Go. Nice and clean. Nice and clean. This one, this black cabin door, they turn white. If you don't take care of them, they fade. So you gotta have to take care, take care of that. And then um, there's a few pointers that I could uh, suggest to you if you guys like to go fishing in the lake. Some lakes, they like your kayak to be clean. So it is just right to get used to cleaning your kayak after use. Yeah, uh, yeah. when you go fishing, for those people who never kayak fishing in the lake, they like your kayak to be nice and clean and dry. So if you're planning to go kayak fishing in the lake, make sure you clean and dry your, um, your kayak, especially inside. Like uh, the way they check it, they'll check your kayak they'll open this and see if it's wet just like that see is the moist that's wet that won't pass you're not gonna be able to kayak fishing at the lake so you have to keep it dry so if i plan to go kayak fishing on the lake what i do is i wash the whole thing and i bought me my wet and dry vacuum and just vacuum that whole thing if uh, i have no time to get it dry but then if you have one week planned ahead of course you can wash it and then tilt it over and get it dry that way always uh, leave this cabins open to dry it up but otherwise if you have no time you can actually use a, a vacuum wet dry vacuum that's what I do. Yeah, lesson learned. I mean, uh, I'm a newbie. I went to a uh, lake like a couple times and I was turned down three times. And then they had to uh, quarantine my kayak for one month. So I was frustrated. So um, yeah, you don't want that situation. I mean, I drive almost an hour to get to the spot and uh, getting there, waking up so early, preparing everything. And then finding out that you're not going to be able to launch your kayak because it's wet. I mean, it's clean. I cleaned it, but it was wet. See, it's funny how, I'm gonna show you this one right here. They will open this. This is your drainage. And then they'll scoop it out like that. And if it's wet, if it's wet, they're not gonna pass you. So um, that's frustrating. They're very strict. I mean, I understand because they're protecting the water. It's a reservoir and most of them reservoirs, they use it for drinking water. So uh, yeah, they don't want any mussels or any uh, water contaminant on their leg. So it's just right for them to protect the water to be nice and clean. All right, we've got that, guys. Looking good. Looking good. I'm gonna set it there for a little bit to get it dry more, and then we can put the UV protector. So while you're waiting to for your kayak to dry up, and it's just uh, it's a good time to spray down your equipment. This one, uh, you don't really have to use soap. You just spray them down to dry. Make sure you take that soap out. Something for this. Uh, Drive. Don't want pollution on these things. And honestly, you guys, um, a dried salty water from the ocean is really stinky. So if you want your wife or your girlfriend or whoever you share your car with, we'll let you guys go out and go fishing all the time. Make sure to take care of your equipment because it's going to stunk up the car. For my fish finder, I'll just wipe it ahead. This one's this uh, the towel that I used to dry up the kayak. So I'm just gonna wipe up ahead the they see the uh, salty dried water from the ocean. Of course, you don't want to spray this down with the water hose. You're just gonna wipe it, up, wipe it like that. There we go. So this is my routine. After 
I use my kayak. I mean, of course, um, you guys are probably thinking like, there's no way I have that energy to do it after I go kayaking. I know, I understand you guys, but you can always do it the next day if you're too tired. Just make sure you clean it. It's very important. Clean it good. As for me, I cannot let that stay salty and stinky in my car because my wife won't let me go down again and fishing. Unless you got your own car to go fishing. I mean, I share my car with the kids and my wife. We only got two cars, but the SUV that I have that I use for kayaking is really suitable for me. But um, for now, there you go, nice and clean. Just wipe up your, your screen there. Gotta take care of that. All right, one last thing. The most important thing is your dry suit. <laughs> You don't use soap on them. Just make sure the ocean, ocean water. Just spray it down. You don't have to use soap on this one. And then to store this, I know people don't know it. I didn't know it until my wife did the research about how to take care of your wetsuit. After you use it, when you put it in your car, don't put them on a plastic bag. You store it out only. So it's suggested to bring yourself some like this, a container when you go fishing. Always have to, I mean, it's a must have container when you go fishing. So I just spray this down with that. So I'm gonna put it inside out and then um, spray it. Same thing what I did in the other side. Yeah, for a wetsuit, you guys, if you guys go out there in the ocean, make sure you, you put this one on. It's on. You never know what's gonna happen. I know it's not comfortable putting on, but you never know what's gonna happen. Things happen, you end up in the water. This one will keep you nice and warm, or else you're gonna die in a hypothermia. You don't want that. At least this one will give you some time to wait for the Coast Guard to come and help you. Uh, I do the same thing with my boots. That's it. And this one, you just hang it on the hanger and let it dry, air dry only. Do not put that on a washer. <laughs> and one of these most important thing, one of the expensive equipment that you have is your fishing rod, fishing reel. Gotta spray that down. And this one that goes in the water all the time. Gotta take care of this one. Just like let it turn a little bit so you take the the salt part inside there you go then that's it nice and clean oh let's let it sit there i forgot to spray down this one and uh, after after i clean up my kayak wash them up dry it up at the end of this video i'm gonna show you guys how i rig my kayak for ocean fishing all right so stay tuned you guys so it's time to uh, put the UV protectant for the kayak. This one right here. So what I do is, um, I don't really spray it directly to the kayak. Spray it on my towel. Just like that. And I like to start on my cabin. This one is the one that tend to uh, turn white right away. Makes it look brand new all the time. By the way, this is a Hobie Outback. 2020 and I didn't bought this brand new I bought this um to a person that um he's from Half Moon Bay very nice guy he moved to different states so, so I got lucky with this one actually that time when it was pandemic it was uh, I think there was a back order for outback kayaks when I got this one from him it was instantly mine so if you feel like you're not wiping anything or you're not putting any of this uh, UV protector in your kayak you can go ahead and spray it but as for me this one costs like I don't remember maybe 15 bucks or 20 bucks so too expensive so if you spray it like that and wipe it like it's the same thing when you, you spray it in your towels so. so as a routine after I do the top part I'll do the bottom part and uh, the same thing the same thing I will check the bottom for cracking and it's actually it smells good yeah it does I don't know that's for me it's not good we pretty much cover everything I think especially for the plastic you guys um make sure you wipe it down with this uh protective because the plastic they're the one tend to fade right away I don't know if you can use this for the car bumpers could be right I'll try. <laughs> All right. Look, look how shiny is this one. That's 
it looks brand new you guys so yeah i suggest to use this more often after washing your kayak time to tilt it over the same thing pull it with your right hands there you go and then as i pull it my hips is pushing towards the other way just like that and then tilt it over a little bit a little there we go there go. and then now when you put that uv protector to uh, get the uh, the highest result make sure it's dry you maximize the result of the the product and then as i wipe it i'm spotting any scratches or deep scratch from my previous trip it's kind of a, a hobby already that i always do in my kayak just to make sure that everything looks good and ready for next trip again so that's all done um done washing and uh putting a protective uh uv protector in my kayak after this um i'm gonna show you guys how i rig this kayak when i go ocean fishing so stay tuned so here you go guys this is my setup for uh kayak fishing on the ocean especially when targeting big fish like hollywood and uh for salmon next uh next month salmon season so this is my bag it's a cooler bag from hobie it's a large size the net of course i'm gonna have a bigger net i have a bigger net for a big fish and um so we're gonna start from the top to the bottom so here's my cabin my front cabin this is uh i have here my hat some uh gopro i have my battery in there some extra batteries i have all the like, gopro things there and socks just in case it gets too cold some beanie some flashlight head flashlight water snack and um more snack so if you guys see it, it looks empty because when it gets too warm or hot already in the ocean i take off my sweater and put it in there okay so um, and uh, of course my mirage drive always make sure mirage drive is all locked in there all right and um my gopro camera for front shot facing me and um you guys wonder what is this pink uh floater foam here i use it to put my hooks so in case uh, if you catch a fish you just hook it up there instead of laying all over on the floor it might hook you uh, to cause some uh accident and uh, after that uh here's my uh cabin so I have uh, some gloves. I like to wear gloves when I go fishing in the ocean, especially because uh, it's bad for your skin. And I uh, put my uh, leaders here. I all set it up, leaders. Those are leaders. And uh, of course, uh, this one, uh, my grip. Some knives, uh, extra leader lines. Just in case I need to make a new leader setup. Some scissors, all my weights here. And another gripper here and some swivels just in case I need to uh, change setup. And over here I have my gaff, my uh, stringer. So uh, for the gaff, I suggest if you bring a gaff, make sure you have the net. Because if you don't have a net and you have a gaff, that's illegal. Okay, the rule says, the law says uh, to make the gaff legal, you have to have a net on board. So remember that. Uh, underneath my chair I have my uh, tackle box and uh, this is my measuring for my fish as easy access and uh, this is my life vest VHF radio of course you gotta have it I have my cell phone in there and uh, I have some mask and I have my whistle for emergency purposes and over here some shibbles extra some maybe hooks that's where i put them and chair uh the chair i have a cushion i put in here uh, i just wash it it's wet so i don't want to get my chair wet so it's i have a cushion that i use here and on the back of it um i have my battery here this is a battery it's 35 pump battery so it's quite heavy if you guys see if i lift it up it's not attached to anything at all so just in case emergency purposes if you flip over this one's just gonna fall my wirings 
here. So if, it, if I tip over, this one easily will unplug and then it's just gonna go down on the ocean. It won't pull me down. Otherwise, uh, if this one is wrapped up to anything in the kayak, it, number one, it will probably way too heavy to flip the kayak back over. So I'd rather lose the battery. It could easily replace rather than having a hard time to flip your kayak over again. And um, this is my fish finder. You guys can see uh, it's way too big for a kayak. You guys may be wondering. It's a uh, nine inches monitor screen um my wife gave it to me as a thing christmas gift so i was so lucky it's a elite ti2 nine inches lorenz so it, it works so any equipment that you guys uh like on my my rig uh i'll put the description down below so you can order it for yourself and i put my uh my coffee mug here or my canister and back here you guys saw this one already and this one right here is to uh the suction pump so just in case the water get into your uh, cabins or anything you just suck it this one is really important to have all the time I mean, you don't need them all the time but it's, it's nice to have them handy and i have right here my flag it's a visual flag uh, just in case if uh, i go fishing uh, before the sun shines uh, i have this one so it turns on so and it's a uh, 360 degree lights that uh, the boat can see me visually and uh, back here my camera gopro and uh, this one is my cartwheel so i'll show you guys what i how you guys uh, see me when i'm a kayak so this is how I look like in a kayak. There you go. That's my view. And this is my view up here too. So, and this is my fishing pole. You guys notice I have two uh, uh, rod holder here. One over here, one over here. So just in case uh, I want to easily switch them over, I go like this, just them like that. All right, you guys, uh, I think that's about it. I pretty much cover it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If, uh, if you like it, please uh, put thumbs up. And um, if uh, you want anything or you see any equipment I have that, that you pretty much like, uh, you can always uh, look down below. I'll put the description. And please uh, don't forget to share this video and hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so it can notify you if there's any next video that I have. So thank you for watching once again. Always stay safe and God bless. See ya. Bye-bye.